Well, hello everybody. It's been a very long time since you've seen this beautiful face. Um, I'm just going to do a video about uh, building a helicopter collective. I built a little unit about a week ago. Um, it's just a prototype. It's pretty ugly. Uh, I just wanted to show you around it and uh, explain how it works. And it's actually really easy to do this if you've got some basic woodworking tools. Um, I'm running it in X-Plane, so I'll show you the hardware and then I'll show you the software setup. And hopefully this will be of interest to some of you. Okay, so this is it. Uh, please disregard how shitty it looks, because <laughs> it is uh, pretty rough. It's just a prototype. Um, so basically all it is, is one of these, uh, everybody should know from watching my channel what this is. It's a BU0836X card, links in the description below, uh, from Leo Bodnar. Now this card is pretty awesome. Um, Basically, it's a joystick. Um, you connect it to your computer with a USB and then all of these along the top uh, and some of these down here are buttons. You can connect 32 buttons or switches uh, like that. Uh, that sort of unit is connected to it. You can see I've got another card over there. I've got several of these. Um, but uh, one of the awesome things that this card can do is uh, run uh, potentiometers. So in this case we're running a rotary um, potentiometer which is the axis for the collective uh, for the helicopter that I'm flying in X-Plane. Um, so uh, the, the potentiometer is tucked in behind here, I'll show you from the other side in a moment. Um, and then the pivot for the lever is here and this is Meccano. <laughs> I didn't know what else to use so I just bought a very simple Meccano set uh, from Amazon for about eight quid and uh, goes up and it goes down which is pretty obvious as you would expect. Now when it uh, turns uh, this is the top of the potentiometer here yeah, let me show you from this angle so you can see that as the lever moves the potentiometer is moved. Now when I was putting this together um, I thought I was going to have to get a lot more arc um, of or um, degrees of rotation rather on the uh, potentiometer to make this work. Uh, that wasn't necessary and I'll show you why when we go into X-Plane, but basically you calibrate the range of moment, motion that you've got and then that becomes the, the full degree of motion of the axis, which is terrific. So the fact that this can't move any further than what you can see here doesn't matter, it just works. Um, obviously this is a very rough piece of crappy chipboard left over from a, a builder who was doing some work here and left literally a ton of material behind when he was done, including a gigantic bag of sand. Thanks for that, Chris, you're awesome. Um, the idea is that a brick would go here just to uh, give it a little bit more strength and stability and it just sits on the floor next to my seat and uh, fashioned a rough handle here if we come up a little bit uh, this is just some MDF that I glued onto this piece of wood just to give it a little bit more thickness uh, to make it feel a bit nicer in the hand and you could add some buttons and switches here although I'm thinking maybe for the next version of this again just a prototype guys um, and girls um, I would probably replace this with a handle from a joystick like the uh, Logitech, I think it's the Attack 3 that I used in the Airbus cockpit. I still have two of those out in the shed and um, I'd like to rip that off basically and use that handle here as the pistol grip and hopefully the three or four buttons that are on there could still be connected and the wires would just run down here and into this card. Um, a couple of other thoughts. Um, you can do that. You can add as many buttons and switches up here as you like and run the wires down to this card. This is a bit of a waste uh, for one card. This card costs £49.99 British pence. So to use all of this um, to run one potentiometer is certainly a little bit wasteful. But on the other hand, if you were to try and buy a, a helicopter collective, if you've done any googling like I have, um, to buy something like this, although not crap like this, that you could connect to your computer. It's very, very expensive. So 50 quid's a bit of a bargain, but it would be nice to make use of these inputs um, and, you know, get a little bit more out of the card. So you could do a lot, lot more with this, obviously. Um, let's just spin it around and I'll just show you the potentiometer at the back. Actually, there's not much to see here. Um, basically, all I did was hot glued the uh, potentiometer into the piece of MDF that's at the front, and you can just about see the uh, the three wires there. Um, we'll, I'll show you a potentiometer in just a moment and how it works. 
Okay, so that is the collective lever. Um, I'm using this with the with X plane, um, kind of all X plane at the moment, and um, you're flying the Bell 429 from a guy called Tom Woods. It's a free helicopter. It is one of the finest um, aircraft I've ever flown in any simulation, and considering that it is completely free, it puts a lot of pay where um, distributors, publishers to shame. Because, for example, I fly the Fly J Sim Dash 8. Um, there's a lot of things wrong with that aircraft. You know, I paid 30 euros for it, I think. And this is not a rant about that product. All I'm saying is that the those people could learn an awful lot about how to put together a uh, payware aircraft compared with what Tom Woods is doing with his Bell 429. Let's have a look at potentiometer. Okay, so this is a rotary potentiometer. They also come in a linear form, and unfortunately I've just been rooting around, but I can't find one at the moment. The linear form is basically just a... If you can imagine a track, um, let's use this, um, it's just a, a track um, piece of metal uh, like this and then there's a, like a little uh, a slide sticking up out of it that slides linearly in one direction only, well two directions I guess technically. Um, and you could use that for this project as well, I just uh, didn't, I bought a rotary one instead um, because I thought it would be easier. To be honest I don't think there's really much difference. Um, so this uh, rotates. It's basically, you can think of it like um, the way a volume control works. That's exactly what this does. Um, it just varies the uh, resistance between these two legs. You get a pointer here. Um, between this leg and this leg, and then this one is for the 5 volt input. Um, if you're not sure, and to be fair, this is not marked in any way, um, although I think it might have had a spec sheet with it. on. E I bought these on eBay for a very, very cheap. I mean, we're talking... A less than a couple of pounds each, I think, or maybe a couple of pounds for three. It, it was very, very cheap indeed. Um, so if you are doing any cockpit building, you really should have a multimeter. Um, it's very handy. The only thing I use mine for really is checking continuity to make sure I haven't shorted out a switch somewhere or done another, yet another bad soldering job. Uh, but this one is pretty simple. Um, you just connect to the, uh, these, well, you connect to any pair of legs and then move the uh, knob, I guess, for want of a better word. And if you see the resistance changing between those two legs, then you know those two are the, um, I don't know, the A and the B, let's call them, and whatever's left over must be for the 5 volt source. And that's why there's three wires going into the BU0836 card. There's um, one for each end of the resistance, if you like, and then one for 5 volts, because these do need power. If you connect the 5 volt to the wrong leg, you'll just burn it out, and uh, don't ask me how I know that. Um, you won't cause a fire or anything, you'll just smell a very slight uh, smoky smell and the thing won't work anymore. Um, it's not the end of the world, although it's very frustrating if it was your last potentiometer. Don't ask me how I know that. Um, in this case, I did actually, although I connected it correctly, I did burn one out before I got this, uh, the one that's in the uh, lever to work correctly. And this is the only one I've got left. Uh, just for the record, as you can see, this is a 100 kilo ohm resistor. I think Leo Bodner on his site does recommend a certain range and I think this is one of them so I just got lucky on that because I didn't check before I bought it. Um, so you've got on this particular one we've got these little holes here and I just put my wires through those and then sorry that's not really in focus there we go. Um, yeah I just stuck the wires through and soldered them gently uh, just enough to stop them moving although there's you could also use hot glue. I've recently discovered the, the wonders of hot glue and, oh my god, it just makes life so much easier. Um, so, that's what a potentiometer looks like. Um, as for setting it up in X-Plane, let's take a look at that next. Okay, we're going to go handheld on this, so I hope this is not too jittery for you. Uh, this is X-Plane 11, and I'm going to go to Settings. And I've just reconnected the BU0836X interface. It was disconnected while I was doing some other flying yesterday. So I'm being prompted with this big green arrow to recalibrate the device. So I'm just going to click on calibrate. And there's only one axis on this device, as we would expect. So all I'm going to do now with my other hand down here on the floor is just move the lever through its range of motion. And that's all the way to the top and all the way to the bottom. And you can see on the blue bar behind, um, well, and on the red bar, I guess, that we're not moving through the full range of motion that is detected for this device, but it doesn't matter. So once I've done that a couple of times, I can just click on Accept Access over here. And now I'm asked to move it through the full range of motion again. And now, levers all the way up, 
and levers all the way down. So that's going to work. And then we just have to click on next. Leave it in the center. It doesn't really matter. Um, I found, I don't know where the center is for the collective lever. Click next, let it do its thing. And then click finish. And then of course you can assign it to collective. Um, if you've saved this in a user profile, which I have actually done for another profile called Hilo, um, down there, then it should work. It, it should, the settings should be saved and that's fine. So it's probably because I changed to a different, uh, there we go. Let's, let's just test it. Yeah. Working perfectly. Okay. So that's all there is to setting it up in X-Plane and then off you go and you fly. And I will tell you, it is considerably more intuitive to uh, fly that way than with uh, you know a, a horizontal throttle on your desk like this one treated myself a while back after I finished some exams to uh, an X56 Rhino setup which is fantastic I uh, really really like it it's a very very good setup um, that's the throttle unit there and that's the joystick down there um, for flying helicopters I take the spring out of the joystick and I've got it sitting on a little pedestal next to me again quite ugly but I don't have a flight deck right now and I threw this together in about 20 minutes out in the backyard um, so uh, that's it I just wanted to show you guys how easy it is to build a collective lever okay so all of that work to build that collective lever was a couple of hours and I'm pretty bad at woodworking um, it's just built out of chipboard and some bits and pieces that I had lying around so there wasn't much to it um, like I said, prototype. Um, this is my first effort just to see if it would work, kind of a proof of concept. Obviously this could be built in a much, much nicer way and made to look much better. Um, I would like to build a, probably a, a center console to go along the top of it as well and add some more buttons and switches in there. And I would probably use foam board uh, to do that. Um, I, I touched on that in a video I did, uh, I think it was my last video, but I'm gonna do a more extensive video, uh, which might even be out today or in the next few days about how to build panels using foam board. It's again, so much easier uh, than using MDF and stuff like that. Yeah, it's not as durable, but you can prototype something up extremely quickly. And if you want to just throw to together a quick panel for flying a particular aircraft, then you can do that. Um, and it's awesome. Um, so that's all I've got today, guys and girls. If there's anything that you would like me to do a video on, I'm trying to get back into doing a bit more uh, flight sim stuff, a bit more video stuff on tutorials and things, because cockpit building is not as complicated as you think it is. Um, it's not as uh, time consuming, it's not as expensive. It always annoys me when I see people saying you could have spent all that money on you know, flight training, you know, instead of wasting your time building that cockpit or that flight deck. Guys, you can spend tens of thousands of dollars or pounds on, on cockpit projects, but the entire amount of money that I spent on my A320 flight deck back in the day was less, just over 3,000 pounds, including the computer. Um, so, you know, all you're trying to do really with cockpit building is to get rid of the keyboard and the mouse as much as possible to make it more immersive. And that can be done very easily. So I might do a video on that too. Um, I'm open to suggestions. I want to do a bit more, for bring you know, get back into the community a little bit more and do a little bit more flight sim stuff and a bit more corporate building videos. So I'm open to suggestions. Until next time, bye bye.